but is, is affecting those systems that we depend on. A new way of conducting the environmental studies businesses is required, and, and I hit upon it with what I just said. It's, we use the term trends this way. You integrate the human dimensions, the social sciences, the law, the economy, with the natural sciences in such a way that we better understand the consequences of our decisions and actions. So that's what this institute is about. Like. We have a new curriculum of five-year master's bachelor's in sustainability science, and already told the administration that the moment that's approved, they'll st start working on the perspectives for doctoral program in sustainability studies. And Montclair State University, as you mentioned, you guys, I'll, I'll just say the following and I'll come to closure is my class, State University would like to continue to develop and grow, not so much space-wise, because I know it's a sensitive issue, but they want to become a tier one research university, just like Rutgers, just like I mean, you and Jay, and so on. And to do that is going to require doctoral programs and lots and lots of grants and new research facilities, and my class State is well on its way. It's already a place to be proud of, but it'll be a new place to be super proud of in a generation or two. So, we're trying to apply what we're doing here in China with some degree of success. And that, that's, a, that's a great segue into that, the whole conference there because what I, my presentation was really about what you do from the top down and what you do from the bottom up. And they're, they're building this city. There's no question that Binju, which is a already would be considered, I don't know, probably be like the fourth or fifth largest city in the United States if it was here. Um, but it's not a particularly notably notable city there. Most people don't even, I mean, no one's ever heard of it. But uh, they're building it up uh, tremendously. So, yeah, and, and they're, they will develop the port and they're putting the word eco on this conference was the Eco Economic uh, Sustainability, International Sustainability Conference. And the human dimension is really what I, where I see the potential between the partnership between Montclair and Binju, and that's what I talked about when I was there, and it's uh, you know perhaps it's uh, ambitious or grandiose or you know whatever, but the, you know the, the the opportunity exists there, and they're eager to enter into a partnership. We, um, both of us, all of us actually, at this conference, we're all sitting in the front row, and we're heartened and somewhat amazed at the keynote address which was given by a professor of the university in Beijing who had come to Binju to give the keynote address. And it was surprisingly critical and, uh, you know, and harsh and cautionary about the, the way that they are going to develop. There's definite tension there, and yet they're able to say, he was able to say <laughs> things that, you know, we're looking at each other saying, is he going to be okay after he leaves this place? You know, challenging kinds of stuff. So that was really encouraging to all of us. Um, you know, and basically what, you know, what I spoke about was uh, I, I talked about Montclair and we are, you know, by any standards, a, you know, a mature, built out uh, culture and village and, you know, I think we do have some practices in place which, you know, which are lifestyle oriented, which they can learn from and we certainly have a lot to learn from them in terms of what, what they are doing you know, from the top down and just building stuff. I mean, we went to, you know, for instance, we just went to a, a lithium ion battery factory, which may or may not be, you know, have new technology or maybe just a manufacturing place where they manage to slap things together. But, you know, they're <coughs> building this, you know, the big old factory with the land donated by the government and the power, the energy to run it, also free, provided free by the government. So. They can kind of, uh, you know, they can kind of do this stuff. Also, on the other trip, visited a three, a five million square foot turbine factory. You know, picture five million square feet. That means it. so they're 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 doing all this stuff. They have the ability to to build technology. Another example I talk about is Wuhan, another city no one's ever heard of. I think it's two million people. Uh, no, a million. I think a million people, a million and a half people. They decided to do an electric car charging pilot project. So they're putting in two hundred and fifty electric car charging. Uh, stations around town. I'm not even sure they have any electric cars there yet, but uh, they're just doing it. So, so what what the proposal is, and what I would like the environmental commission to consider, and frankly, I think it would be nice for you to think of it as a potential recommendation to the township if you 
feel it's uh, it worth pursuing. Is um, you know, it, with some knowledge about this, and I'm, I'm available to talk, you know, more or you know, be in contact with anybody, anyone here. Is the idea of entering into a partnership that will play off work that we're going to be doing anyway here in Montclair because of our EPA Climate Showcase grant that uh, you know I'm sure you know about this uh, and the creation of this climate committee, which is going to be meeting on a monthly basis, and there'll be people who are uh, connected with the community whose mission is to work with the environmental coordinator and work with our government and really branch out this mission throughout the, the municipality so the people are working on different initiatives in churches and schools and institutions and in their homes, you know, greening your home, weather stripping, you know, uh, driving less, carpooling, who knows what, what these things are going to be. But, but it's really going to be a uh, you know, bottom-up thing of the, of, of the um, you know, related to what the Environmental Commission does, a separate, separate group. And again, you know, we are going to have this process anyway, and what I'd like to suggest is that uh, Binju, which is eager to do this in parallel with us and is eager to form their own climate committee or green team, you know, is to, is to have uh, an effort where we communicate with them. And the, the EPA grant, I, Ray, uh, you've talked about here before, so yeah. you know it's a matter of, you know, kind of uh, getting an a evaluation of where we're at deciding what our target is, getting an action plan towards re meeting this target for, you know, anything from, uh, you know, reducing our uh, fuel usage, more recycling, you know, et cetera, et cetera, and then, you know, benchmarks along the way so we can see how we're doing. And, you know, what I thought would be really nice to happen, I don't know if it's, it's feasible, would be to do something like have a check-in, a 15-minute conference call or, or something at the 9 o'clock at the end of your meeting, you know, once a month between, uh, you know, at, you know, out of this group to have the, uh, you know, the, the climate committee or representation of, uh, you know, to, to just basically check in and, and see how we're doing and try and do things in parallel. They're eager to do this. They would like, they would really, really like to do this. I signed a general agreement um, in Binju. I'm not in our form of government in, in power to sign anything. None of this is going to cost, I mean, I can't, I mean, I can't, what, I'm, what I'm saying is I can't agree to anything that costs a dime or anything. I, I express my own commitment and, you know, and, and the willingness to be able to partner with them. Um, they would like to have an agreement with us, which would essentially, um, our part would be as spelled out in the EPA grant. Mm -hmm. They would essentially agree to do the same thing on their part so we can work together. Let me just make one, one more couple of comments. I'll, I'll read from uh, something that's not in front of me. And I had some slides. Yeah. I've been invited, I'm sure there's, a, uh, there's <coughs> probably thousands of people going to this luncheon. We're meeting with the Lieutenant Governor and the Chinese Trade Minister on Friday. And I'm just going to read from the little blurb that's sent that after the invitation. China is New Jersey's sixth largest trading partner now. Trade with China in this past year. 2009-2010 fiscal year has increased 7.5% to $1.1 billion. There are at least 100 Chinese companies that are now investing in the United States. It's not just one player, it's every town and city in the entire country. You guys have a chance to be in the forefront of some of this. It's at our university, the town's level of magnitude there can be some real meaningful things that come out of this. Great, and, and just one, uh, a couple of other things. We, we just happen to be um, one of the people, uh, one of the companies is actually a Jersey-based company, Red Bank company called NatCor, and uh, Professor and Andy Barron from NatCor, who's a brilliant guy, nanotechnology person, they signed an agreement with the Chinese government to manufacture these thin film solar panels in, in which she has used nanotechnology 